question is I have for you tonight or today, whenever you listen to this, is are you one who takes every word in the scripture seriously so that you want to know it? Not only know it, believe it. Not only believe it, defend it. And not only defend it, live it. Is that your life? Is Jesus Christ your life? Jesus Christ is God. He never cast aside his deity. He always was God. He is God. He always will be God. And he's always God. The Rightly dividing the word of truth, if they're doing that, that's the place you need to be. If they're not doing that, you need to get out of there. You and I leave the scripture and we don't stay with it, we lose the understanding of what it says. Or we eisegete, we read into the text. This is the, these are things you're not supposed to do. When you stay within the confines of scripture, you'll never go wrong. I wanna say that one more time. When you stay in the confines of scripture, you will never go wrong. The Godcast with Josh Fritz, where the scripture is honored, the lost are warned, the saints are fortified, false teachers are exposed, and the Lord Jesus Christ is glorified. Here's your host, Josh Fritz. Welcome to this edition of the Godcast, episode 68, episode 68. How are you on this Friday, April 3rd, 2020? We're almost like a month set in here with this virus um, being mainstreamed, and um, I feel like it's been going on longer than that, but uh, yeah, this virus seems to be a an issue, you know, it just doesn't go away. And um, it's 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 always going to be around here, you know, for for a little while now. And uh, do we see any end in sight? Eh, maybe we'll see. Um, but at the same time, um, there's a lot of things going on that we need to be aware of. And I want to um, point you in the direction of uh, first. Before I get into the topic, I do want to do some housekeeping here. If you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel that I'm on right now, the Bible Thumping Wingnut Network, please go ahead and do that. You're going to find other content here regarding the creator of this channel, um, the Bible Thumping Wingnut guy, Tim Hurd. Please check that out. And uh, the Bible Thumping Wingnut.com, in which the podcasts are there. There's many other podcasts, including mine and his and others. Please check those out. I would highly recommend that you do that. Um, as you can see, um, there's other housekeeping too. That, I mean, if you want to go to my YouTube channel, I do re-air these on there. It's the Godcast with Josh Fritz. Just search it. You'll see the logo above me. Uh, you'll see that logo there. And uh, amongst other things, uh, I have also small videos that we go over. Uh, more devotional in the sense to, you know, tell you what I'm going through and uh, things that I can help you with as well. Um 609-631-209-7457 is the number. You can call that. Um, feedback, concerns. I do get feedback from time to time, and the more feedback that I get, the more that I'll bring up on the air. So if you want to do that and interact with me, I'd appreciate that. Um, Facebook as well. Um, this will be re-airing there. And uh, even in here in the comments on YouTube, if uh, what I'll do is I'll get that going, get the comments going on this. And on top of that, right now, I'm also on Instagram. Instagram, um, you can see me as I start to show up, and um, you'll see me there. I, inter I maybe interacted with a few people already. If you want to go there, it's the underscore Godcast. You just click on it, and uh, most of the same content goes there too. But uh, I'm trying to get that more uh, of a um, more interactive in that sense. Um the funny thing is that you find me here early on a on a day like this in which, you know, normally I'd be at work. <laughs> normally I would be uh, 
probably having lunch right now. You know, that's usually how that works. But it seems like I'm trying to get in the chat here, so that way we know. Actually, I want to do this. As I'm doing that, um, basically, yeah, I, I would be at work right now, but I'm not, which is fine. Um, you know, it's the, the case. I'm leaving the chat right here, so I have my phone here. Um, I would be at work, but uh, late, recently my job, about a week ago, getting into the second week now, or the end of the second week, rather, um, they shut it down, so they furloughed me, and I um, haven't lost my job, per se, but, uh, you know, there's the, my job, and I'm dealing with car parts, but, uh, you know, we've they stopped everything, just about, and uh, made it like a small a venue and um there's no need for more work at this time because not everybody's out not everybody's getting their car fixed um but it's an essential business but at the same time uh, my co-workers and i are furloughed so yeah, i can do two things i can find more work or i can wait until this is over and i i still have some time so why not take the time and make a podcast you know and dedicate my time to that so in the meantime what i've done is i've done a few episodes but i've also built a website too you can go there too if you want www.thegodcastwithjoshfritz.com you can go there everything's there that you need to know about this podcast and uh usually after the episodes i'll upload the video there and you can access everything there so it's another place to go to to check it out and uh, i would appreciate that too so with all that said, uh, let's get into the topic. And the topic is the forked tongue of Governor Cuomo. Well, why would I do that? Why would I say he's got a forked tongue? Double, or, as we would know, double-mindedness. Um, well, last week, or towards the end of the beginning of this week, end of last week, he, you know, he has these daily press briefings, which, in my estimation, is a good thing because it's keeping us informed. Um, and I'll give him his credit due there. He is doing the best he can to give us the information that we need to know. I appreciate that. You know, it's about time something like that takes place. Um, but and I, I, I say that with, you know, great care um, because I live in New York. He's my governor, so I, I'm paying attention. Um, the best thing that government can do is to inform you what they're doing you know you want to know what's going on you want to know where they're at and what they're trying to get at and i've been seeing good interactions with him and the president back and forth and they're working together um two opposing political parties yeah i know working together it seems to be something that we quote unquote long to see but we know when they're working together against the people that's a problem but um from what I see, he's doing the best he can. But, and I say that again, but be careful. There was a there was an instance last week in which he had a... Um, he had a quote in which I, you know, I took issue with. Yeah, my mother is not expendable. Yeah, that one. And your mother is not expendable. I didn't mean for that to play right away, but... That's really what I'm getting into. Um, him saying that, I just clicked the link. That's why I did that. Um, let me just switch here to see if this is it. No, right here. Okay, so we're going to go. I'm going to hit the play button, and we're going to play the clip. Let's do full screen here. Okay, so we're going to play the rest of this. Let's play from the beginning. And uh, he makes a fan- this is fantastic to me. You know, I I, I agree with him and what he's going to say here. But it, it's an issue when you you don't know the past. You not you got to know the past, and we'll get to that in a second. So let's just play this for now. Yeah, my mother is not expendable, and your mother is not expendable, and our brothers and sisters are not expendable, and we're not going to accept a premise that human life is disposable and we're not going to put a dollar figure on human life. Uh, first order of business is save lives, period, whatever it costs. A hundred percent agree. A hundred percent. 
100%. No problem. You're going to see where I'm going to be getting at in a second. Most of you that watch this, you know how I feel. So, I also don't believe it's an either or. I believe you can have an intelligent, refined public health strategy. You talk about risk stratification. You can have people go to work. You can test people and find out that they are resolved from the virus. Let them go back to work. You can have younger people go back to work. You can have an economic startup strategy that is consistent with the public health strategy. It's smart. It's complicated. It's sophisticated. But that's what government is supposed to do, right? That whole concept of develop government policy and program. You can do both, uh, but not in a uh, clumsy, ham-handed way, right? Well, we'll just sacrifice old people. They're old people anyway. And the old get left behind. What is this, some uh, modern Darwinian uh, theory of natural selection? You can't keep up, so the, the band is going to leave you behind. We're going to move on. And if you can't keep up, well, then you just fall by the wayside of life. God forbid. All right, I'll stop it there because it's like a second left. But, I mean, for all intents and purposes, you know, leaving the economic discussion aside and that's what i'm going to do here i'm not talking about that i'm talking about this the concept of life okay the concept of life a hundred percent grand slam home run i would have thought he was pro-life at this point but he's not and i say pro-life like this because even the pro-life movement doesn't go all the way regarding um abortion oh oh did i say that yes i did why because we have to know our history. And again, I say this with great care because there's going to be the application part of this podcast. You need to pay attention to that, too. So please stay tuned here. Um, let's be reminded. Let's be reminded of what was going on a little bit over a year ago when the newly uh, elected and uh, inaugurated uh, new term for, I believe, not only the governor himself, but also the legislature and the assembly. They're all one political party, so all ruling right now. And let's not forget this. You have, I'm going to actually read this, which is just beyond me. This last year, Governor Andrew Cuomo today, this was last year, um, in 2019, in January 2019, today fulfilled his promise to sign into law the Reproductive Health Act, a key component of the 2019 justice agenda within the first 30 days of a new legislative session. The Reproductive Health Act protects, prote protects women's reproductive rights by ensuring New Yorkers can make personal health care decisions me and medical professionals can provide crucial services without cr fear of criminal penalty. This legislation codifies Roe v. Wade into New York state law. In the face of federal government intent on rolling back Roe v. Wade and women's reproductive rights, I promised that we would pass this critical legislation within the first 30 days of a new session, and we got it done. Again, I'm quoting him. I'm not... Uh, in the face... All right, I said that already. Today we're taking a giant step forward in the hard-fought battle to ensure a woman's right to make her own decisions about her own personal health, including the ability to access an abortion. With the signing of this bill, we are sending a clear message that whatever happens in Washington, women in New York will always have a fundamental right to control their own body. So you have that here. I don't even know if I want to. I don't even know if I want to play this video just because I. Well, you have the video there of him signing the bill. January 22nd, 2019. I don't even think I have to. Because it just makes the point already, what I just played, that clip, underscores the forked ton. What's a forked ton? What is that? You're speaking one way and doing another. So the question in many minds is, which is it? Right? That's a problem. 
it's a problem because you cannot have you can't be one way say one thing and say another you know it's it's hypocritical and i'm not, I'm not even going to play the video just because it's just not privy to what i need to do here we already know this was the history of what he did he signed that into law so on the one hand right the argument i'm making in this is we can all lives are not expendable right we're going to do everything we can to save lives noble right thing to say but in the past here you said you know it's okay to eliminate life in the womb of a mother you know and that this is this is the argument you know this is the constant argument that that's going on right well with god it's not an argument it's not scripture clearly you read the scripture you know that god made the baby in the womb however that baby is made it's not that baby's fault it's not that child's fault and i refuse to use that f word that people use to describe a baby in the womb i, I wish that word was eliminated frankly the 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 scientific term and i won't i won't say i'll bit i'll try not to say it here on this because i just feel it's an affront to li human life altogether of course he's going to react to those getting sick right now at this virus of course he's gonna he's, he's being he's right about that but but when it comes to children in the womb we have a right to eliminate them we have a right to kill them that's what's law in this state up until the moment of birth it, it just raggles my mind how that's still on the books and it's still going on while this virus is ravaging ravaging the whole state that we live in and, you know, millions of children are being eliminated. Thousands of children. Now, ever since that law was codified in, well, not codified, but ever since it was upheld in 1973, we've eliminated so many children. And uh, it's, it's really, really hard for me to listen to him say this. I like what he said just recently about, this uh, trying to fight this virus and keeping people alive i get that i love that but at the same time how am i going to take that when he last just last year passed this law to say that we can kill children i i it just it raggles my mind you know but at, i know i know based on the scripture being double minded is not a good not a good place to be so what i want to do there's two applications here I want you to know, and we'll, we'll get into that. Um, first, we're going to talk about it. What is double-mindedness? Okay, you're going to read it. You, basically, I did a simple search. You can do this yourself. Look up the word double-minded, and it will come up. And a simple search, you know, you're not doing much here. Um, you can dig deeper, but you get f a few examples. In Psalm 119, 113, you get... I hate those who are double-minded, but I love your law. It's a psalmist. What does that mean, the double-mindedness? Well, if you look this word up, it's it's really interesting how you get this definition. Now, I'm using the Strong's lexicon. It's half-heartedness, right? It's also to be ambivalent. I want to look this up. I, I know I clicked on the Strong's word. That's what I want to do. That's what I want. Okay. So he's divided. Now, that could be, you could, either, you could either take this one way or another way. If he's divided, maybe he's moving in the right direction. I mean, now that he said something correct, perhaps he's moving in the right direction. Or we know politicians can play the game. And uh, he's not the only one. There's many others, both on quote-unquote Right and left are both um, hypocritical, so we all know that. But God, God doesn't like it either. So another word for this could be also he's divided in the mind. That's what I mean. He could be torn. Maybe he's having a quote unquote what the world says come to Jesus moment. I don't know that. And now on top of that, with his brother Chris Cuomo being affected by this virus. I'm praying for the guy. I mean, I pray for this governor every day. So, and I urge you to too. Please pray for him. Pray for his brother too. He's not. He's not doing too well. Um, I appreciate you know the, the the effort he's trying to do with this virus, but at the same time, he he's got issues. And we 
again, I'm saying all this on the front. When I get to the application of this, you need to uh, hear me out. So being skeptical, double-minded, you know, it's not a good place to be. You cannot be that way. Um, and certainly God doesn't like it. And we go to another example is James chapter 1, and we're going to read a little bit there. James 1, as I click on it, I want to read a little bit into James here as we click on it. Now, this is for the Christian here, in which we read this, James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes who are dispersed abroad, greetings. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Boy, is that a timely scripture for now. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith, without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. You see, this is talking about one lacking wisdom and doubting God and trusting God. This is a Christian application for us here. Okay, so... Let's take a second, or let's take a few minutes off of Governor Cuomo, and let's look at ourselves. That's the application that I'm trying to draw in here. I can go after Governor Cuomo with full force right now, and I don't want to really do that, but it's 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 noticeable. What about you and me? Are we unstable? Do we act all bent out of shape? Do we not know what to do? Um, these are things that we need to check within our own heart and our own life. And uh, I, I, I really can. I can go after Governor Cuomo all I want here. It's not going to serve the purpose of the podcast. The podcast for is for me, for be here for me, and understand that I need to, un- I need to get this myself, and then for you, for you to understand it and to a- apply and to say, hey, you know, I don't want to be like that. I, I don't want to be like uh, a person who's double-minded. And think of, think of James here, who's the brother or the half brother of the Lord Jesus Christ, who. He might have been this way. He might have been torn with his own family, and then with, you know, his will be his brother would be the God of all human flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ, God, the God Man, living with that all of his life, seeing that maybe producing some type of jealousy. I mean, these these this I don't know. You know, this not it's not known, but you have to you have to credit James here for saying, hey, you know what. We need to look at this in a certain way. You know, James' perspective here, he was converted after the Lord had been risen on high. So that that's that's key to know, to understand that. Um, the trust in God needs to be solidified. You know, it, it's he says here in verse 2, consider it all joy when you encounter various trials, whatever trials it may be. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. How long are you going to last for God, right? It should be all the way to the end. Having its perfect results so that you might be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. But he gives the way out here. He gives you the answer. If you lack, if you lack, lack, if you lack wisdom, ask God. And you can't doubt about it. You can't be double-minded. You can't be one foot in the world, one foot in the scripture, or one foot in the world and depending upon, quote, the government, or depending upon God. It's total trust in God. That's really where we need to be at. That's where I need to be at, right? I say that before I tell you to myself. Here you go. But the Verse 9, But the brother of the humble circumstances is to glory in his high position, and the rich man is to glory in his humiliation, because like flowering grass he will pass away. For the sun rises with a scorching wind and withers the grass, and its flowers fall off, falls off, and the beauty of its appearance is destroyed. So too the rich man in the midst of his pursuits will fade away. This is a good chapter. I'm just going to keep reading it. Um, if I can, let's just scroll a little bit. 
Blessed is the man, blessed is a man who perseveres under trial, for once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Again, good scriptures to see, to have, to know, to look at, to say, mm, I need to get there, I need to be there. So, hello to those watching on YouTube, I see you there. i got one person talking, so feel free to comment. Um, if you're on Inst you can see me on Instagram. Uh, I, I got I got an audience of one on Instagram, so I appreciate that. Um, happy to see that. I have a guest. Give me one second. You can come in if you want. I think that's my father. Love interruptions. This is great. I guess not. All right. Well, if he comes in, he can. Um, basically, let me get back and gather my thoughts here. Um, let's see. Who is it? You can come in if you want. You have a key? I love this. This is great. <sighs> Gotta love live videos here. Let's call him. We can do that. That would be even more funny. I think that's more funny if we do it that way. All right. Well, if he shows up again, I'll let him in. That's pretty funny, though. Um, talking about James, let's see if I can get back to the topic at hand. <laughs> it just makes me laugh. Um, where is our mind supposed to be? Our mind is supposed to be on Christ. Okay? So instead of being double-minded, we're supposed to be of a sound mind. And what I want to do, I want to read a few more scriptures there of which we will talk about. First, let's do this. Yeah, I did not expect a visitor, so you got to pardon me for that. It's funny. I mean, I'm laughing. I think it's great. But at the same time, I know there are people here looking for uh, answers here. So I have a few scriptures I want to read to you. This is the mind we're supposed to have. This is the mind we're supposed to have. So I want to read a few scriptures, rattle them off, read them, and um, think about these things, okay? Just think. 1 Corinthians 2.16, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Romans 12.2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Same context, uh, 1 Corinthians 2.14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And I want to read the rest of that. You know what? Let's go back. Second Timothy 1, seven. For God hath, God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. 
1 Peter 1 13 wherefore gird up the loins of your mind be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you into the rev at the revelation of Jesus Christ Philippians 2 5 let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus and you get there the the humbling that Jesus had becoming a man and coming to die on the cross you read that uh, chapter uh, 2 of uh, Philippians first Peter 4 17 for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God and if it first begin at us what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God so everything when I come up when I come up and bring this message to you about Governor Cuomo and his double tongue or his uh, forked tongue it's you got to take into consideration what about me first you know and that's that's why this application is so important that I don't want you to take away from this video, and I know some will, and that's why I did this, that I'm coming after Governor Cuomo hard. Well, wait a second. What about you? What about me? Are we like this? And we, we shouldn't be that way, okay? First Peter 1 Peter 1.3 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a li lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Not sure why that's in this bunch, but that's still a good verse. Verse John two six. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. And that's a good admonition. If you if you're gonna be like Christ, you have to. You you're gonna say you're like Christ. You better live like Christ. Okay. Very important. Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So there is a distinction here. We're not walking after the flesh. We're not, you cannot have one foot in the world and then one foot with a trust in God. It just doesn't work. Okay, that's really what I'm getting at here. It, this is how you avoid double living, right? You don't want to live two different ways. It's, it's unhealthy and... Uh, Actually, the New Testament definition for double-mindedness, and I didn't—I forgot to tell you this—is two-souled. It's two-souled. It's—it's—it's it's unhealthy, really. That's really the meaning there in James. There's another. There's another scripture in James I want to read too. Um, Philippians four eight. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, good report any virtue, there be any praise, think on those things. That's the mind of a Christian. Okay? Another one. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Again, think about these things, right? What is a Christian? These are All these ver scriptures are describing what a true Christian is, right? Do we measure up all the time to this? No, we have sin in our life that we have to regularly deal with and flush out of our system, right? And wash out. So that's something to think about. And we got a we have a, a viewer from South Africa, which is great. Nice. Nice to see somebody from South Africa there in the chat. I appreciate that. Um Going further, I want to read that scripture in James chapter 4. Let's go do that. These are admonitions that you can take straight from the scripture, and that's why I want to help you out here. Again, I appreciate whoever is on, whoever is on Instagram that's still been here, I thank you. Thank you for staying with me. I appreciate that. Also, um, here is the here's the scripture here. A biblical lens. Okay, so that's you who stayed. So the other guy left. Okay, understood. <laughs> thank you. What is the source of quarrels con and conflicts among you? Is it not the source that your pleasures that wage war in your members? You lust and do not have, so you commit murder. You are envious and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. 
You ask and you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, so that you may spend it on your pleasures. You adulteresses, sis, yes. you adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture speaks to no purpose? He jealously desires a spirit which he had made to dwell in us, but he gives a greater grace. Therefore, it says, God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be miserable and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord and he will exalt you. So, again, you don't want to be double-minded. You don't want to be a friend of the world and then make yourself an enemy of God. So, we got to call balls and strikes here. Okay, you can't be you can't be one way and then another way. And uh, that's that's the app that's the application here for this episode because again i can rail after governor cuomo and and in in part be right but at the same time you have to take this example take this example we we see it right we're we're, we're upset because of abortion i am too but let's not contribute to all this let's pray for the man let's let's take the necessary steps to pray for our dignitaries whether he knows it or not, he's actually a servant of God. He's a minister that God has put, Romans 13, right? We, we, we understand that. He doesn't bear the sword for nothing. Um, th this is what the scripture says. We're to respect them. But do we go along with everything that they do? No. We pray for them when they're in the, in the wrong. We put them before the Lord. Says, I, I'm praying for this man to be transformed. He needs to be transformed, saved. He needs to be born from above. He needs to be delivered. Salvation is his greatest need. Forget about everything else. It's salvation. Through Jesus Christ, the gospel. So if there's any way for the gospel to be presented to Governor Cuomo, how would it go like? Sir, you, you're you doing things opposed to God, right? You can go after, you can go after anything. You, you can do those things, right? And just, for me, point him to the scripture. Point him to the scripture where God, who is the author of life, God who created man who failed. I'm sure he knows that story, right? The true story. I believe he's Catholic, so he knows. Or he claims to be Catholic. So I, I have to double-check that, but I'm fairly certain that uh, his father, Mario Cuomo, the governor, was is Catholic, and you know, so to speak. Um, so he would know these things, right? So what would, he, what would I need to do to go to him and say, hey, or anybody would go to him and say, sir, do you know you're a sinner? Do you know that you're born in sin? Do you know that you are contributing to and allowing the murder of children to go on? Now, these are things that you present to them. They either do two things. They're going to recoil or listen. If they listen, that's good. It's a good thing. But really, God's got to use the word that you share with them, the gospel message, the good news that, yes, we're horrible people. We're bad. You're bad. But guess what? God is perfect. The Lord Jesus Christ is perfect. And he came from heaven to die on the cross, shedding his blood so that our sins could be forgiven and taken away from us. His righteousness applied to our account. The imputation of his righteousness, now, I necessarily wouldn't say it that way to him. Maybe you have to break it down some more. But for us to understand the just for the unjust, right? the perfect one for those that were dead in their sin. Governor Cuomo needs to be made alive. He needs to be made alive. He's spiritually dead. I, I long for them. I hope the man is transformed. You know, Can God do that? Absolutely. If he wants to. If it's already foreordained in the mind of God to do so. It's In, in God's mind, if, it, if this is the case, because I don't know, you don't know, but if it is the case, it's a done deal in terms of God's working out of salvation in people's lives. Which really makes the Christian understand, yes, we have a responsibility to share the truth, but at the same time, God is going to unfold and let his plan go forth and save people for himself. That's what's going to happen. 
For him, I don't know. I hope and trust that's the case. It would be a great story. Um, we know a, a few in the Bible that this happened to. Uh, I can think of um, I can think of Nebuchadnezzar is another one who recognized the sovereignty of God and who really was taught a lesson by God and humbled him. And um, you know, I pray for the man. But getting back to the gospel, the gospel is that great story that we're, we're horrible. That's the bad news. The good news is that Jesus Christ came and defeated death, defeated sin, and conquered the grave. His body did not see decay. He rose from the dead, and that's our hope, to know that we will too one day rise to eternal life. And that's the gift. It's a free gift of God. We we'll neither er earn nor deserve. We don't deserve it. Definitely do not deserve it. Neither did we work to get it either. We've been called by the truth of the gospel. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's what this governor needs. So I urge you to pray for him. Pray for his leadership. Pray for him to reconsider the unborn. That he might work in a way where he would help them. It's it's, it's vitally important. I, I wanted to talk about that today because it's just so important. So, let's see. Comments. Well, we got some people going after Cuomo, which, you know, we can easily do that. But, again, the application is to look at ourselves. You know, what are you doing about it? What am I doing about it? I pray for the men. That's what I do. Pray for the men. I mean, what he's saying about his the, the family members that he might have listed or the people that he suggested, pray for the men. And he's right about the... Not, people being not expendable, they're not. Nobody's expendable. I get it. He, he he wants to save lives. Great, but you know, last year, and you still adhere to this position currently. The blood of children's, uh, uh, the blood of children that have been killed, speaks from the ground. Right? Who does that think? Who do you think of first when I say that? Abel. Cain killed his brother. Abel. His blood cries out from the ground. Well, the these children here. That's what's happening. Uh, let's see if I can get back to my dad here. Uh, he did not get back to me. Okay. So with that, um, that's all I have for now regarding this podcast. If you like this podcast, please subscribe to this YouTube channel, The Bible Thumping Wingnut YouTube channel. Uh, I'm sure, I'm very positive that Tim would uh, uh, appreciate that. The Bible Thumb Wing That Guy. Go check out all the other podcasts. The recent newest podcast that's on the network is A Servant's Heart. A Servant's Heart. And that's by John Williams. A new podcast that's on the Bible Thumping Wing Nut Network. Please check that out. Go to that website, www.biblethumpingwingnut.com. He's a, one of the most newest podcasts. Check him out. Many others on there. Figured I'd give him a plug because uh, he's recently just came out with another one. I think that went out today. You might want to go click on that, check that out. Uh, but uh, with that being said, um, God bless you guys. Thanks for watching. Sorry for all the uh, theatrics that you uh, you saw in the last uh, 15 minutes. It, my my father knocked on my door and he didn't know I was recording. I didn't tell him. But uh, we've had him here on the show before, so. Perhaps I should get him back on. He's been my only guest on the show. So if you if you want to be on this show, um, you know, privately message me and uh, we'll we'll talk about it. If you have something to contribute to the conversation, I don't mind having another guest. But I'm I'm very particular when it comes to guests. So you know, gotta go through some screening process. No, I'm only kidding. Um, but um, yeah, that's it. Um, that that's it for today. If you have any questions, comments, concerns. You know where to reach me, live Bible studies 412 at gmail.com is the email. www.godcastwithjoshfritz.com. You can go there. Many things to click on. If you want to support this ministry, I would appreciate that. If you go to that website that I just mentioned, click on support, and you'll be brought to a page there if you if you feel so obliged. I'm not soliciting money. Um, uh, we walk by faith here, not by sight. But at the same time, I don't mind somebody sharing 
if they want to support this, I would appreciate that. Um, if you feel like we need to talk about something else, um, again, we can talk about it. Um, comments, concerns. You, uh, that's on Instagram, a biblical lens. I'm plugging you for some reason here. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave it in the comments below or message me here on Instagram as well. So I'm everywhere. If you message me, I'll take a little bit of time and I'll get to you. And also on Facebook, don't want to forget that either. So with that, guys, God bless you. I will see you guys here next time on the Godcast. God bless you. Bye-bye.